on Animal ER. A team of Houston's top veterinarians treat a white tiger in crisis for the first time. But during their daring surgery, we got a little bleeding. Life-threatening complications set in. The tiger's oxygenation status started to go down. And a special companion for an ailing child. They fell in love instantly. Requires urgent intervention. This is the kind of case that can go south very quickly. While a beloved lab needs a delicate surgery to save her life. It's not getting better if we don't do something. It's animal medicine. I don't hear it. I can't find a heart. At a whole new level. There's almost nothing we can't do at Gulf Coast. The staff is going to attempt a first at Gulf Coast today as they get ready to meet a special new patient, a six-year-old white Bengal tiger named Nia. She's a rescue who lives five hours away at the Pride Rock Wildlife Refuge. Over the last few months, she's been hemorrhaging during her menstrual cycle. Nia has never given birth to a litter. Her owner called Dr. Brian Beal. This tiger is having reproductive problems, basically having discharges and occasionally mild infections. And what we're going to try to do is get that uterus out of there. They're going to have to perform an ovario hysterectomy to remove the uterus and ovaries. But there's a twist. Gulf Coast is not equipped to house the tiger overnight. The surgery must take place quickly enough that she can go home the same day. Uh, that table's on wheels, so we can just wheel it out, right? Oh, yeah. But being that this guy is so big, we're just trying to clear the way to make it easiest for us to come into the OR, move out of the OR. It's a complex procedure. The animal weighs 350 pounds. Dr. Beal assembles two interns, two additional surgeons, and a team of veterinary techs, as well as exotic animal expert, Danielle Inman, to assist. Hey, Gary. Oh, doctor. So uh, we're, all, we're all here to give you ooh, some help. We're, we're glad to be here. How was the ride? It's not, it's not been a, a, uh, one of our better moments, but uh, she worked up. How she tried to take a peek at her? Uh, yeah. All right. They're also attempting something brand new, to use a minimally invasive technique. A hysterectomy like this has rarely been attempted on a tiger before. Holy shit, there's a tiger here. Those bars don't look as big as they need to be when she's behind them and she's growling at you. It's amazing to hear a tiger roar in the middle of Houston, Texas. It really made her presence known and it got all of our attention. After the long car ride, Nia is restless and unpredictable. Dr. Caleb Hudson has the most experience with tiger surgery on this team. Big cats are, they're very powerful creatures, and even if they're, even if they're tame and they're used to you, you know, it, it can be unsafe. We won't really be able to, to get close to it and do much of an exam on it until it's, it's heavily sedated. If y'all just want to give me maybe 60 seconds with it on myself. Sure. One of Nia's handlers attempts to calm her while a zoo veterinarian gets ready to administer a cocktail of sedatives powerful enough to temporarily knock out a 350-pound tiger. It's been nice knowing you, Joe. <laughs> when I hear big cat surgery, there's a couple things that come into my mind, and one is keeping the cat asleep. So we've brought in an exotic animal specialist to handle the anesthetic and also the pain management of this big cat. to be either on that side or she's gonna need to be on this side. Is the back open? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Nia's in an agitated state. They do not want her to attack the cage and injure herself or the people around her. Hi, baby. One second. Miss Sandoval with Harley? Yes. Come to the back. We're ready for you. 
Harley is a newly adopted puppy with a serious elbow fracture. Harley was running alongside my husband, and she went to cut in front of him as they were running, and her leg got caught in between his, and they tumbled down, and she fell and broke her elbow. It's okay. The family got Harley to be a companion for their daughter, who suffers from a rare genetic disorder. Our daughter has been in and out of the hospital her whole life. Sawyer has been asking for a puppy for months. We made her promise that when she was um, healthy enough to have a puppy, that we would let her get one. We took her to the shelter, and they fell in love instantly. We want for Sawyer to have as normal life as possible. Having a puppy is all part of that process. So our biggest concern for Harley is that she's unable to run and play like a normal dog, and that's just something I don't want for her. Dr. Wayne Whitney, an orthopedic surgeon at Gulf Coast, is on the case. Brittany, nice to meet you. Why don't you come over and look at the action? So here's what we're seeing. Do you see that? Yeah. OK, that concerns me. It's fractured through this part, but it hasn't fractured through the rest of the bone. It's, it's almost like a piece of wood that you split almost all the way. I'm hoping that we can get to this before it becomes a full-blown fracture. So that's the goal. Okay. Um, I would, you know, I'd say let's just go ahead and do it. This is the kind of case that I worry about just walking around on the hospital floor. I know. You know, this could go south very quickly. You will have to prepare for everything. The worst, right. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry you're having to go through this, but I'm, I'm glad that we're getting a chance to get it before it becomes a much more serious and expensive problem. I agree completely. And I mean, we bought the dog specifically for our daughters, and she loves her. Seriously, thank you so much. You're welcome. Harley is more than just a pet. She got this dog for her child that, you know, has, um, has special needs. And as a father, I feel very responsible to help every way I can. You're not just treating a pet, you're treating the whole family. Harley's fracture could get worse at any moment. Dr. Whitney chooses to operate immediately. So our goal is to go in with a scope and then we can put a clamp across it to compress the fracture arthroscopically and then put a lag screw across and then prevent it from becoming a disaster. The first step in the surgery is to find exactly where the fracture right. is. Okay. Dr. Whitney will use an arthroscope to examine inside Harley's elbow. All right, can you see that crack right across there? Yes. All right, so there's the fracture. He's identified the fracture in his scope. Now Dr. Whitney must drill exactly into the right place to compress it. Okay. If he is off by even a few millimeters, the bone will heal incorrectly, leaving Harley yeah. disabled. All right, so you on your fracture? All right. There you go. All right, let's do it. A bird is in critical condition. It's having difficulty breathing. Dr. Natalie Antonoff prepares for emergency surgery. Spirit is a 16-year-old cockatiel who has a mass growing in her mouth, covering up the opening to her trachea. And that's why she can't breathe. Hi, baby. I know, it's awful. There's a very good possibility that we're not going to be able to get this mask off. But at this point in time, with the way that she looks today, I feel like if we didn't do this procedure, she would have less than 24 hours to live. Dr. Antonoff gives Spirit a sedative. First, she must evaluate the mask that is rapidly growing and choking this 16-year-old pet. We're going to do sort of the bird equivalent of a tracheotomy, and then we're going to open up her mouth look and see what we see in there. If we think we can get any of this off and give her comfort, we're gonna go ahead and remove it and do our best. But if we can't remove any of it without making her worse, then we're not gonna do anything. Is she breathing? 
Yes. Okay, so what they're doing is putting a monitor her on, and at the same time, I am plucking the feathers and preparing her for surgery. Normally, I would be using a drape for this, a sterile drape, but she's a tiny little bird, and time is kind of of the essence with her. Tiny little window. Making my incision. It's a pretty small incision into the skin. I go through the muscle till I get to the body wall. Okay. And this is the tricky part. Popping in. There we go. And I'll take that tube. Man. So this is the airway tube. So this is the equivalent of um, like a tracheotomy. And we're going to test this to see if it expands. Ready? Mm -hmm. yes. Good. Good. We're in. OK. So now I'm just suturing it in place. Dr. Antonoff finishes suturing the incision and has to work fast. Spirit's advanced age and the sedation make even a tracheotomy risky. Before Dr. Antonoff can examine the mass in Spirit's throat, the cockatiel takes a turn for the worse. I don't hear it. I can't find a heart. Spirit's heart has stopped beating. Let's get some epi. As they would with a human patient, they try to kickstart Spirit's heart with a shot of epinephrine. Okay, here's another dose of epi. Okay, hang on. And now, we don't worry so much about being sterile as we do about getting epi everything epi. into her. This is delicate CPR. Dr. Antonoff is attempting to revive spirit a cockatiel with a mass growing around her throat. Moments ago, her heart stopped beating during an emergency airway surgery. Okay. Do you, where's that fluid with dextrose? I'd like to get a little bit of dextrose into her just to drop. All right, let me check and see if we've got anything here. It's good that we've got, at least we got the airway. Because I don't think we would have. Like mm -hmm. We got something? Really erratic. Let's give it another round. Let's get more epi. Okay. So, nothing? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna stop. All right, we're gonna stop. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Once we had done three rounds of CPR, we, I went ahead and said, let me just look in her mouth because we really didn't get the chance to look in her mouth while she was still alive. Oh, uh, you know what? The team realizes it was a losing battle all along. The mass in Spirit's throat was already past the point of any treatment. You see that? It's, it's on her trachea. It's huge and it's attached really, really firmly. I, there's no taking that out. So I feel like even if we could take the mass off part of it today, it's going to come right back, and we're going to be right back in this exact same situation. Oh, poor baby. This is probably the worst I've seen. I have to call Mr. Medley and let him know the news. And he, he knew fully going into this what the odds were for her to pull through. Hey, it's Dr. Antonoff. Um, I don't have good news for you about spirit. Um, unfortunately, she did not make it through the procedure. Never gets easier to make those calls. She felt no pain. She wasn't suffering. I'm, I'm so, so sorry. It's hard. It never gets easier. If it did, I think I'd have to stop being a veterinarian. Play with me, Alan. 
We're allowed to encourage all of the naughty behavior that we don't encourage in our own animals. <laughs> and then we send them home. And then we send them home, all riled up. Just like being grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nia, a six-year-old white Bengal tiger, is at Gulf Coast to have her uterus removed to stop her chronic bleeding. It will be a groundbreaking surgery. But just getting her out of her cage and into the hospital is a challenge. in this case is her keeper was distracting her with some good little rump scratches and then Dr. Joe gave the injection. So now what should happen is she should get uh, very sleepy pretty quickly here. And then at that point she'll be, you know, a lot safer and we'll get her downstairs to begin prepping. Is she getting sleepy? A little bit. We're gonna give her like to at least 10 more minutes. I wouldn't mind if she had more. Yeah, I don't think anybody would. It's not always easy to tell what plane of anesthesia a patient's at. They can act like they're asleep, but certainly we see it in dogs and cats where they seem like they're asleep, but when we stimulate them, they pop right back up and want to bite us. There's no way to move Nia without lifting her onto a gurney, and time is limited. They must get her under a more powerful general anesthetic before the temporary sedation wears off. So we're gonna move her from her crate onto the gurney so that we can get her downstairs to the prep room and the surgical suite. Up as much as we can. One, two, three. Right. Let's go. Yep. We're taking the tiger out of the cage, we're putting her onto the gurney, and then we're, we're transporting her into the elevator and down the elevator to the hospital. And during that time, she's just laying there on the gurney asleep. So I'd say there's definitely a little bit of apprehension. We were nervous for a variety of reasons. Big cats and anesthesia don't always mix well. And so we've really got to hurry things along. It was a surreal experience to see a tiger come down our hallway. My technician skills kind of went into high gear, so I was really focused on that. But at the same time, I kept thinking, this is an amazing creature. The biggest challenge with treating a tiger is just her sheer size. Oh, this is a deadlift. She's a massive animal, and so just having enough manpower to lift her is, is a unique situation. We ready? Everyone's ready? Leading the Gulf Coast team for Nia's procedure is one of the youngest surgeons on the staff, Dr. Caleb Hudson. The first surgery that I participated in was a spay on a cat. I was 16 years old. I'd just gotten my driver's license. From that time on, surgery was very fascinating to me. I trained at the University of Florida. There's a lot of big cats in Florida. So I have a little bit of experience in surgery on tigers, but nothing minimally invasive. So to have the, the chance to do, you know, a laparoscopic surgery on a tiger is, is pretty exciting. Doctors Hudson and Beal are going to try a procedure that has rarely been done on a tiger before. They will use small incisions and a lighted camera called a laparoscope to help them remove the uterus. The recovery time for this procedure is far less than with open surgery. What we're doing is we're making an incision into the abdomen, and we're going to put a port in will allow us to put a scope into the abdomen. The goal is to get Nia in and out of surgery and able to travel home as fast as possible. Can we start insufflation? Under general anesthesia, they're limited to approximately three hours start to finish. To be able to see inside the abdomen for a minimally invasive surgery, you have to distend the abdominal cavity with carbon dioxide gas. And that distension puts pressure on the diaphragm, which tends to collapse the lungs down. So you've got it working very, very quickly. So now we should be able to put the scope in and have a look around. Here it comes. 
Oh, yeah. So we're Describe moving it. forward in the abdomen, looking at part of the stomach and the spleen. As we move back and around, you can see oh, yeah. part of the suspensory ligament of the uterus and the ovary. And then we're going to just figure out where we're going to establish our instrument portal, which we're going to want to be not too far away. The team will use three small incisions, one for the laparoscope to illuminate Nia's organs, and the other two for the surgical instruments to remove the uterus. This case is more challenging than most of the cases of laparoscopic surgery in tigers that have been done before. Can you show me now where it's pointed to make sure I'm not going to stab it into the screen? For whatever reason, no one's, no one's chosen to use laparoscopic surgery to operate on a tiger that has a, a uterine problem before. So it's definitely more difficult. There it is. There we go. There you go. There you go. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay. So we're progressively cauterizing the blood vessels and resecting the tissue. A lot of vessels there. <laughs> But so far, this is bloodless. Yes, it's going people. great. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's look at the uterus now, Brian. Try to see how much of the uterus we can actually see. Just as doctors Hudson and Beale get to the uterus to remove it, they discover a problem on one side of the uterus they were not expecting. Oh, man, thank you so much. So her uterus is super large on this side. This uterus was many, many times normal size. Yeah, let's get, we got a little bleeding. Let's it turned out that the uterus was very abnormal. She had a condition that we call a pyometra, which is an infection, which makes the tissue unhealthy. It makes it break more easily. It makes it bleed more easily. Can't see where it's hemorrhaging. We were not anticipating that. How are you? Duchess is a nine-year-old lab mix who is suffering from a lump in her head and a persistent discharge from her left eye. Well, my concern is we know she's not feeling well and uh, her skull is caving in. There's a concern that what is going on inside of her head is cancer. She's a part of the family, so we're hoping for the best and that it's not. Dr. Heidi Hottinger, a soft tissue specialist, orders an MRI and conducts a physical exam. Can you look at me, baby girl? Here we go. So this little lady has a condition going on in her middle ear. Could be cancer, but more likely is a benign process called a cholesteatoma. It erodes through bone. It actually is invading into her brain, compressing her brain. So she has a lot of muscle loss right here, rounded over here, caved in here. And then also her eye is sunken, and she's not producing tear, uh, enough tear either. So she's got an ulcer on her eye. Surgery appears to be the only option for Duchess. Hi, Mr. Sparks. Hello. I'm Dr. Heidi Hottinger. Nice to meet you. Have a seat. We're going to talk about a few things. So I can't give you a guarantee yet that this is not tumor. Right. I wish I could. But she does fit a lot of the picture of a dog that has this condition, which is called a cholesteatoma. Here's what we know about them, is that if we can go in and get a lot of that waxy material out, we can kind of get a lot of this under control. Things we have to keep in mind, though, is that some of the nerve damage that is present may not go away. So the biggest thing I do have a concern about is the eye. Okay. There is the option of saying, wow, if all of this is to make her feel better, mm -hmm. if she has an eye that's always ulcerated and painful, maybe she would be better without that eye. Yeah, I agree. Let me show you a few things on her MRI, too, so you kind of know what we're doing. So here we have this little bit of black. Here we have this great big area of kind of white stuff. And look at her brain on this side. Notice how it's touching her brain. I do. See, we really don't know if it's a tumor to get in there. We do don't. We? So here's what we would do. When I go in, if it's tumor versus this cholesteatoma, they look completely different. They have a completely different texture. I'll know. If you want some time to think through all of this, the truth is, it's not going to get better. It it's going to get worse. Correct. And if it we if we have a chance to retard that, 
Yes. And give her a good quality for a while. That's kind of what my wife and myself have decided to do. Great. We'll get that all set up, and then I'll give you a call after a surgery. Ready. Okay. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Yes, I will take good care of your girl. I know. With Duchess, and it's only going downhill from here. It's not getting better if we don't do something. All right, baby. Go ahead. See you later, Dad. See you in a day or two. (laughs) Be a good girl. Dr. Whitney is operating on an elbow fracture on Harley, a therapy puppy and the beloved playful companion to a two-year-old girl named Sawyer. Dr. Whitney must insert a tiny screw to compress the fracture in exactly the right place. All right, there you go. If he is even millimeters off, the bone will not heal correctly and Sawyer could lose her playmate. All right, let's do it. Okay. Now we're going to screw the head of the screw in. As Dr. Whitney positions the screw, he watches the fracture in the scope to see if it compresses correctly. Perfect. All right, we're done. That's beautiful. Couldn't be happier with that. But I feel very good about it. I don't want to jinx this, but uh, it was um, exactly what we thought. So. Uh, we went ahead and compressed it back down, and that, that uh, headless compression screw that we put in, um, and hold it there and should allow it to heal. This dog should do great. You're gonna go get Harley. The next day, Harley's family returns to pick her up. Yeah, no, Harley doesn't need a stroller. No, Harley's gonna walk, because we got her leg fixed. Hi, guys. Hey, how are you? Hi. Thank you for your patience. Oh, no problem, how are thank you? you. Great. Hi. Hi. Who is this? This is Sawyer. This is Sawyer. Hi, Sawyer. You wanna Can see I Harley? see your puppy? You gotta be Here gentle, comes though, Harley. Okay? You wanna see her? Okay, your puppy. There's oh, Harley. Oh, there she is. Oh, that's a smile. <laughs> As a father, it was definitely emotionally gratifying. She feels all better. That dog's going to do great and be there to support that little girl for a long time. You know, that's probably the the part of this case that feels the best. Can you tell Dr. Whitney thank you? Thank you. You're very welcome. (laughs) It will take a few weeks to determine if Harley's elbow heals correctly, and she can go back to being the rambunctious puppy Sawyer needs. Nia, a white Bengal tiger, has been in surgery for 90 minutes when things take an unexpected turn. We were expecting a uterus that was going to be pretty small, maybe slightly bigger than normal size. This uterus was many, many times normal size. She had a condition that we call a pyometra, which is an infection. We got a little bleeding. Let's go. I'm trying to focus on this area right up here to see if we're getting any hemorrhage from right in here. We were not anticipating that. We're not going to be able to do anything about that. There's too many vessels, so we're just going to have to get it out. They're hoping to be as minimally invasive as possible, but the tiger has a serious infection and internal bleeding. And now, a new and troubling problem suddenly emerges for Nia. One of her vital signs starts falling, her blood oxygen level. 77, let's see, 75. Did it just suddenly decline, or has it been like that for a while? We started to have a few anesthetic issues. This lack of oxygen to the brain is called hypoxemia, a condition that mountain climbers get when they collapse in high altitudes, and they can die if their levels don't stabilize. The tiger's oxygenation status started to go down, and so we look for that value to be somewhere above 95%. And when it starts to drop lower and lower into the low 90s or the 80s or the 70s, you start to worry about getting brain damage, potentially. I started to get pretty nervous because you know you don't have a lot of time left at this point, but also you know you're not really that close to being done with the surgery. It becomes kind of a nail biter. You become more and more and more nervous. I became more and more and more nervous. You know, just watching those vitals change in a, in a negative way, it became more and more critical that we finish this and we finish it quickly. And we were only halfway done, so it wasn't like we could just stop and close. 
and say, well, we'll fix it tomorrow. We had to continue on. To make matters worse, Nia's uterus is too swollen to remove it through any of the small laparoscopy holes. We're trying to make a decision where to go and open, open her up and just get it knocked out real quick. We could probably just get our uterus out of this, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A small let's, let's, let's go ahead and make it. I think we need to. My guess is that we had about 45 minutes to an hour from when we started opening. Uh, but the longer you get, the more chance there is that she may not wake up OK from the anesthesia. Let's just go in and open this and get the last piece out. We can't lose this tiger under anesthesia. And if they have to start waking her up, we have to be done with the surgery before they wake her up. OK, let's go. Give me surgery lights on, please. Okay. With her blood oxygen level falling and the time they can keep Nia under anesthesia running out, Dr. Hudson attempts to enlarge the small portals created for Nia's surgery to pull out the rest of her infected uterus immediately. You know, I started to get pretty nervous. We need to open this and move forward very quickly. If we're going to finish it, we have to finish it now. There we go. All right. Yeah. Good. It's coming up. OK, great. Color looks much better. Yeah. It's actually very good that we went in and got this out. I don't, I don't think she would have uh, lasted long with a, a pus-filled uterus like we saw here. All right, let's have some. Are we going to have some flush? Yeah. We weren't able to do the whole surgery as minimally invasively as we'd hoped. But based on the size of the uterus that we found in there, we were able to do it as minimally invasively as you can with a uterus of that size. The surgical task is done, and Nia's vitals are getting better. But Dr. Hudson knows that Nia isn't out of the woods yet. Damaging complications from being under anesthesia this long are still a big concern. Looking up at the screen and seeing that the numbers are lower than you expect them to be, I start to get very nervous because I start to wonder, will we be able to get her back? Is she going to wake up from this surgery or not? I didn't know what was going to happen. Dr. Hottinger's team prepares Duchess, a nine-year-old lab mix for surgery. It's pretty prominent with all the hair clipped off, isn't it? Yeah. It's OK. It'll grow back, and she'll look all pretty again. Dr. Hottinger will remove Duchess's ulcerated left eye and some of her ear canal before the most critical part of the surgery. Cutting deep into Duchess's ear canal and determining whether the lumpy substance near her brain is cancerous. Duchess has what we're hoping is a condition called a cholesteatoma, but you can't be 100% sure until you go in there. This could be tumor. And if it is, the whole game plan changes. So right now, we're dissecting around the ear canal. And then that will get us down to where all of this debris has accumulated. Dr. Hottinger has to carefully remove a growth from the left side of Duchess's head. A nine-year-old lab mix who came in with a lump on her head and an ulcerated eye. Only open surgery will determine whether the lump is cancerous or not. This is great. It's not a tumor. So what I found when I opened up was exactly what I was hoping for, was this material that is consistent with a cholesteatoma. And basically, it looks like soft candle wax. And you just scoop it out, lots of it. This is good. Dr. Hottinger has ruled out cancer, but she still needs to remove more of the waxy substance around the brain. Here's where we're kind of getting into the brain. OK. So if anybody comes to the door, no. OK. I couldn't be distracted when I was working up in a very deep, dark hole around her brain. I needed to not tremble, move, look away when someone talked with me. No, I, I needed to have it all about Duchess.
makes for a good day yeah. when you feel like you made a difference, especially for a sweet little lady like this. Hi, it's Dr. Hottinger calling. Everything went very well. No cancer. It's like hip, hip, hooray. You guys can celebrate tonight. OK, thank you. Bye-bye. Here at Gulf Coast, we provide the care for our staff dogs. Come here, Joey. Sit. We actually have a running waiting list for employee dogs. We can fit them in. And once it's their turn, then they bring them in. Yay. Everything went great. great. The best thing of all is when you get those huge heartfelt hugs. What a sweetie pie. It just makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> She's good. She's good. Yay! Nia the tiger has just finished a dramatic surgery that removed her infected uterus. One, two, three. However, a full half hour afterwards, Nia is still out. The Gulf Coast team, led by Dr. Beale and Dr. Hudson, fears she could be suffering from the adverse effects of prolonged anesthesia, as shown by one of Nia's vital signs that they're watching. The anesthesiologists were periodically monitoring the electrolyte values. And what they were finding was a trend where the potassium was going up every time they measured it. Make sure she has plenty of water to drink. Potassium is mildly elevated. That's not a big problem for the body. But if the potassium starts to get very, very high, it can actually result in death. I mean, it can be fatal. Oh, there we go. She's breathing faster now, so. When her oxygen went back up to normal and she was breathing on her own, that's a good sign. But then I still had to worry about, did that low oxygen tension in her blood do anything to damage her, her brain? When a tiger's waking up from anesthesia, we're watching for some indicators that she's waking up OK, all right, that her, that her mental status is OK. At six years old, Nia is in the prime of life. Under normal conditions, she could live another 10 to 12 years. But big cats don't always metabolize anesthesia. So we want her to, to just be a little more aware, um, you know, essentially to wake up from this procedure. We'd like her to be lifting her head and, and have a little more wherewithal before we send her home. Let's get her in the trailer, get her out of the sun. She'd love to have a sunburned tummy. Every minute that passes with Nia unconscious creates more concern about her full recovery. What we want to see is that she starts trying to move, kind of making an attempt to right herself, to get into a more normal position for a tiger to, to, to sit or lay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Nia. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. You know, as I'm looking at her, and she's, she's taking much longer than I want her to, to wake up. She's been given the antidotes for the drugs, the sedation that we gave. And so she should be there with us, but she's, she's not. She's still sedate, and so it's scary. Less than 24 hours after ear and eye surgery near her brain, Duchess is ready to reunite with her owner. Here's our girl. Now remember, hair is clipped, which makes this look a little more unique too. Could you see how bony that side of her head is? Hey, but sweetie. Hey, sweetie. over on this side. She's like, I hear your voice. Hey, I hear baby. You. There we go. Hello. Hey, heard you was a good girl. I heard you was a good girl. She is such a wonderful girl. We love her. I'm glad to see Duchess back. I think that uh, everything that we had done here is going to make her a happier dog. You know, we got Duchess from a, a no-kill pet shelter, and uh, we've had her, we've had Duchess eight years. You know, it's, we're her no-kill family. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Hi. 
appreciate you. Oh, thank you. That's the best part of my job. <laughs> and that. Yeah. The tell. wagging tail. The best part of the job. That never stops. <laughs> I know. When you get that hug, it means the world. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Two-year-old Sawyer Sandoval's parents wanted to give her a puppy to help her cope with the stress of her rare genetic disorder. And now, five weeks after Dr. Whitney's precise surgery, sealing a stress fracture on her elbow, Harley is living up to her promise of being an active companion to Sawyer. We are thrilled that Harley is doing so well. Sawyer and Harley just love to play. They're up and down the stairs all the time. Come here, Harley, hold on. We're so relieved that she's going to be able to enjoy her puppy, and they're going to have a wonderful life together. <laughs> Open your eyes, girl. Nia, the white Bengal tiger, who had an emergency hysterectomy, has still not come out of anesthesia. Her surgical team is concerned about possible brain damage and won't leave her side until she wakes up. Under anesthesia, you know, there's really no movements. I mean, the body is relatively paralyzed. You need to be watching for the subtle indicators that she's waking up OK, that we didn't cause any harm by anesthetizing her. Come on. Come on. Come on. Nia. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Come here. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. There we go. Yeah, she finally like opened her eyes and she's looking at Danielle now. She's waking up to Danielle. Lovingly. Yeah. She's about to lift her head. I she wants to. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Oh, yeah. Come on, Kitty. Yeah, come on, good girl. Here she goes. Yeah. There, there we, we go. go. Yeah. Come on. That's when I started to relax. That's when I started to breathe a sigh of relief and say, this is a normal recovery. I mean, it just looks like a large version of a domestic cat waking up from anesthesia. I think she's going to be fine. Being able to work on a tiger, it was, it was a very happy experience for me. Faced with the challenges we were faced with today, we, we really shined. You know, everyone did a fantastic job, came together. That made me happy. <laughs> Thanks for coming down. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. This surgery was a big surgery for us. It built a lot of morale, and it showed people at our hospital that they could do things that they didn't know that they could do. Gary? Hey, it's Dr. Beal. How did Naya do on the, on the trailer ride home? She settled down uh, after we got her out of the trailer here. And she knew where she was, she was fine. Well, give Naya a big hug for me, OK? <laughs> <laughs> really, that tiger made me think that there's almost nothing we can't do at Gulf Coast now. <laughs> <laughs>